So what is verasion? Verasion is the start of, hey dude. Ooh, look how long he is. All right, we're just gonna hope I'm not chopping off my head here. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. And this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. So today is kind of just another day on the farm. We have been ridiculously busy and I'll be honest, I've been kind of behind on making videos, but uh, that's just how life goes sometimes, right? So since my last video, I did end up having to dust one more time. It was kind of like, we were a little bit on the fence. Uh, Verasion kind of is starting, which I'll explain that to you guys in a little bit. Uh, so once Verasion is really going, I don't have to dust anymore. We just were barely seeing it start. So we decided it'd probably be safe just for me to dust one more time. There's no cons to doing that. So I did dust. And now I'm gonna go out, I just dusted the other night, I'm gonna go out to a few rows that I think I put it on a little bit light and I'm just gonna empty my duster completely. So that way we can get the duster unhooked. I wanna get hooked up to the sprayer and I can clean the duster later on, but I just wanna get as much dust out of it as possible because cleaning it is gonna be a mess. So I got my New Holland T4105 Vineyard Tractor and my Pack Blast Duster. Let's see, I don't think there's very much in here. Whew. Oh yeah, I'm practically empty already. You can see that little auger. I wanted to attempt to do this without getting dust all over me. Um, and then if you guys did miss my last video, I got a camera a backup camera and a screen from dakota micro so i'm super excited about that it has been really helpful because i can actually see the dust um looking at this screen i don't have to keep bending back so i'm super thankful to dakota micro for this and i'll put a link in my description if you guys are interested i love it all right let's go empty this duster all right there you go so see these are the fans that my dust comes out of and when I'm dusting, I can really clearly see the dust coming out and that makes it nice. Because otherwise I really am constantly turning back and I know it's like, maybe I need to be stronger, but it does start hurting my back, the constant turning. So that's gonna be a lifesaver and I'm excited to try it with my sprayer too. Okay, that just took about three passes. Now my duster should be fairly empty. I went until I couldn't see any dust coming out at all. Um, I'm gonna unhook it on a pallet. I'm not gonna wash it right now, but that way when I am ready to wash it, I can just take it out with the forklift, blow it off, pressure wash it, all that kind of fun stuff and get it packed away for the winter, I think. I don't think I'll be using it again till next year. Okay, we're gonna head out to the vineyard to get our little grape lesson in for the day. Oh man, things are looking beautiful. Everything is looking magnificent, guys. Look how beautiful they are my little babies so much foliage which is all the leaves the grape clusters just basically continue to blow my mind i i just can't believe it to be honest let's see if we can see much under here there's a good view Let's talk verasion. So my grapes right now are about to start going through verasion. A couple clusters I've noticed have started, but not too many yet. 
So what is verasion? Verasion is the start of grape ripening and grape softening. So when you see a vineyard with uh, like purple grapes, verasion is when the grapes start going from green like mine to purple or red. But because I grow a uh, white wine, my grapes really aren't gonna change too much in color. They will start getting a little bit more translucent looking and they're definitely gonna get soft. So like right now when I pinch the berries, like they're still basically rock hard. And when I find a cluster that has started going through verasion, they're, they're starting to get a lot more soft and a kind of more shiny looking. So that's why we decided to dust one more time because it hasn't really started too much yet but i'll have to see if i can find one but as time goes on we're going to start seeing them more so the other thing that verasion does that's when the sugar starts going up and the sugar in grapes is measured by something called bricks and in hopefully maybe the next video I will show you guys I got this tool and you actually kind of crush the grapes and you put a little liquid in it and you look inside of it and it shows you the bricks percentage it's really cool I think it's really cool um, so the goal of my vineyard is going to be at least to get to 19% and the last time I checked we were between four and eight I checked two different clusters so let's just say an average of six percent so my goal will be to get to 19 and my PCA who's one of the guys that really helps me out a lot he said we're probably gonna see on average it go up at least 2% a week so we're talking possibly five weeks out from harvest Ah, it's so exciting um, but it's gonna be fun to show you guys that process of everything starting to go through verasion checking the sugars hopefully I can show you guys the tool I have and harvest is right around the corner, guys. Um, it's pretty crazy. It is definitely wild seeing all, like, look, it's the size of my hand. And they're just, oh, look at them all. You soft. Oh, that one's a little soft. Just a little, little bit, little bit. The bad thing is, is once verasion starts and the grapes start getting soft, the birds will want to start eating them. Now, in really high dollar vineyards, they actually will put off these poppers that basically pop. It sounds like an air cannon and will scare the birds off. I've actually been to other vineyards where they play a sound that is like a hawk attacking a bird. That's what the sound is so I'm not gonna do that uh, I don't I, I it might drive my parents crazy for one because my parents live next to the vineyard and luckily I'm in early harvest so hopefully we won't have that issue too much but who knows what will happen in the future another thing I want to do is put it's not gonna happen right now but maybe over the winter I want to put up some owl boxes and I want to put up some stands for hawks so just so I can bring that natural um, basically predators in luckily we don't have any chickens here but we'll bring in the owls and the hawks and they'll hopefully keep the birds off the grate I don't even know why I set my GoPro down um, so I've got my phone out here but I just found some grapes right there you can see they're shiny um, that are going through verasion so hopefully you can hear more than the wind all right so you can see how these guys are a bit shiny and when I I know you probably can't even tell but when I squeeze these they're soft like these ones down here yep yep they're getting soft Let's see, over here, yeah, all these are. So this, this one's pretty hard. Can't really squeeze those at all, but these are getting soft. You can see they're getting light and translucent looking. Oh yeah. So these ones going through verasion.
So that's all for the vineyard today. There's nothing really going on. It's too windy to spray. I'm going to head out and do some work for my dad the rest of the day, I think. And then we're irrigating corn. So I'm gonna try to get some video of us irrigating corn tonight so you can see how we do the siphon pipes. Anyways, I'm out in my dad's alfalfa field right now, which looks absolutely gorgeous. What do you guys think? I just I think it looks beautiful out here. It's like the biggest green lawn ever, except it's alfalfa. So it's beautiful. It's been irrigated and it's gonna get cut pretty soon. So before the alfalfa gets cut, we have to come through and make sure all the dams are moved and any pipes that we use to irrigate or move, that way the swather doesn't hit them. So I'm just gonna do that, it's really simple. I basically walk right down the middle of the ditch and move all these things and then we're good to go. So those bales here that are like more yellow, that's actually our um, straw from the triticale or the triticale. I still don't know what's the right way to say it. And then the greener bales over there is actually our last alfalfa cutting. This could mess up a swather real quick. So I'd have to check with my dad, but I think we cut alfalfa like every 28 days or once a month. We don't cut it ourselves. We have someone else that does all the cut, the cutting, the raking, the baling, and takes the bales. So we just grow it and irrigate it, take care of it. Um, but basically what happens is it gets really nice and green like this. They come through with the swather and they cut it and then they will leave it lay out and it kind of gets dry a little bit then they come through and rake it and make these big wind rows and then they come through and bale it and they pick up the bales they put them in the stack and once they've stacked the bales we start irrigating again and it's just kind of that process and i want to say on average out here the alfalfa lasts about five years so I don't know if that's like how everyone does it, if people have it shorter, longer, but that's kind of like the average lifespan of the alfalfa as you plant it once and it lasts five years. Look at that big old snake. So we don't have any poisonous snakes around here. Hey, little dude. So that's why, well, maybe I wouldn't be freaking out anyways, but uh, none of the snakes around here are bad guys. So they're not very scary. Ooh, look how long he is. <gasps> what a beaut. I don't know where, I, oh my gosh. <gasps> Do you want to be my pet? He's like, excuse me, ma'am. I was just chilling here, minding my own business. If there are venomous snakes where you live, I would understand 100% why you're scared of them. But um, for people that live like in my area, I don't understand why they're scared. They're the coolest creatures. Yeah, you are. Look how nice they are. <laughs> he's probably like, I'll bite you now. Now that you say I'm nice. Yeah, he's mad at me now. You go. Anyways. I like them. Um, good hiding spot. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. They don't bother me. But like I said, we don't have any venomous snakes right where we live. So if there were venomous snakes, I'd probably freak out when I saw them. 
my sister had snakes growing up. So I don't know, maybe that's why they don't freak me out. Okay, so we were going to change the water, my dad and I, but the, um, the pipes aren't out yet. And basically what it is, is we drive around the end of the field and we can see where the water's running out and these have not made it all the way out yet. So we're not gonna change it right now. My dad's probably gonna come really late tonight and just shut the water off and we'll restart it in the morning. But for today's video, I wanted to show you guys how I start the siphon pipe. Um, I have done some videos on me just like where it shows me starting them, but I'm not sure if I've ever like done it up close. I don't know. Anyways, so we do irrigate some of our corn. We don't irrigate all of it. This water is coming straight from the river and um, it's got all this like pipe system to get it over here from the river. We pull a ditch and then we create these furrows and we do these pipes. These are smaller. In my video that we were irrigating alfalfa, I had a really big six inch pipe. These are two inch pipes and I can just start with my hands very easily. We don't irrigate all our corn and we get no summer rain. I've definitely said this in videos before because I know like in the Midwest and other places they get rain. Well, some of our corn doesn't need any water because we live on an island and we have a high water table. So, okay, let me show you guys a little bit of how I start these siphon pipes. All right, we're just gonna hope I'm not chopping off my head here. So like I said, this is a two inch siphon pipe. And basically what we do is we just put it in the water and I put my hand on the end and pretty much pump it like two times and pull it over. And that suction brings the water over. And that is basically it. It's really fast and easy. The six inch pipes I've done in the past, they're a little bit more work. I have to shove the whole pipe in the water um, just to try to get as much air out and I have to really pull it over hard. These guys are pretty easy and I can normally do them pretty fast. And there you have it. We are running 75 pipes in this field right now and it's going to take, let's see, one, two, three, four, like five sets or so. And they're being ran for roughly 12 hours. So it's not too bad. These pipes are fairly easy to move and start. It's just a lot of them. But when my dad and I do it together, it takes about 30 minutes. So once this gets finished, we're going to be moving on to alfalfa next. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to try to get back on the wagon of getting these YouTube videos out. I know I've been a little slow with them lately. We have just been so, so busy. Um, but I am so excited. Grape harvest is right around the corner. And I can't wait for all you guys to experience my very first grape harvest with me. All right. Remember to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button if you're enjoying my videos. And I will catch you guys later.